So the last problem that we're going to look at is being able to use Lagrange multipliers to find the dimensions of this rectangular box if the volume of the largest volume if the surface area is 64 centimeters. You might remember that we saw this problem before um, and I believe we got square root of 32 thirds for both for all three of the sides. Um, it was extremely painful if you recall um, looking at that video, I think it was 18-6, um, and it took us about 20 minutes to be able to do that. Let's see if Lagrange multipliers offers any alternative or any relief intact to this. Okay, so um, we know that the volume is x, y, z, and if you look back at the video from before, we found the surface area for this to be equal to 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz, and that's equal to 64. That's our constraint. And so if this is our function f and our function g is going to be the 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz, then we can clearly just use the formula for the, um, for the Lagrange multiplier. So fx is going to be really easy fx is just going to be yz and lambda gy so lambda gy is going to be equal to the partial of or gx excuse me lambda gx is going to be 2y so lambda times 2y plus 2z fy that's just going to be equal to xz, which is going to be equal to lambda times the derivative with respect to y of g, and that's going to be 2x plus 2z. And then finally, fz is going to suggest that um, xy is going to be equal to lambda um, 2x plus 2y. All right, so now we probably already have the premonition that x equals y equals z. All right, however, we can't just go through and see that without going through and verifying it. All right, so um, a suggestion might be to be able to solve each of the different variables in terms of each other, or even solve for lambda. So we could set each of the functions equal to one another. So um, if we solve each of them for lambda, all right, it's pretty easy. We would just divide each of the sides by whatever the coefficient of lambda is. We would get that yz over 2y plus 2z is equal to xz over 2y plus 2z or 2x plus 2z and then finally xy divided by 2x plus 2y is going to be equal to our um, lambda all right um, now even though all the denominators or all the denominators have a factor of 2 in it so we could divide everything by 2 okay or actually multiply everything by 2 um, but let's just focus one maybe two of the equations all right and it doesn't really matter which one let's just focus on this animal right here all right those two so we can see xz divided by 2x or we could just go ahead and divide by two or multiply by two and we could just say xz x plus z is equal to xy over x plus y all right. Now we can divide both sides by x if we chose to, and we would get the relationship that z over x plus z is equal to y over x plus z, or x plus y, excuse me. And when is the only time that that could possibly be true? Well, notice that if z were equal to y, then clearly it would have to be true. All right, so right here, we could just say that this is true when 
when z equals y. So let's hold on to that. Because we're going to have to go back and pick two other equations. All right. And let's just pick these two, the first two that we have. We're going to do the same exact trick. All right. And you're probably going to notice that something um, is going to happen with that. So yz over 2y plus 2z is going to be equal to xz divided by 2x plus 2z. All right. And we can divide everything. And remember that z is equal to y at this point, so we can substitute that back in. But we can divide everything by or multiply by 2. We can cancel out the z's, so we get y over y plus z is equal to x over x plus z. Right. Everybody said that y is equal to z, so we could just substitute back in. Um, but clearly, the only time that this equation could be true, independent of, x, of z, is that if x were equal to y. So this is true, so this can only be true if x is equal to y. And by transitivity, we already saw that z equals y and x equals y, so this means that x equals y equals z. And now we can go back up to the constraint. Remember we have this constraint that 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz equals 64. So let's just substitute everything. Um, let's just substitute everything in terms of x. And so what that would give us, and I'll just copy it back down here, is that 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz equals 64. We divide everything by 2, and we get x times x plus x times x plus x times x, and 2 and 2 and 2 and 32. And we can see the writing on the wall here or on your monitor, all right? And so that means that x is going to be equal to plus minus the square root of 32 thirds. Um, and of course, we don't care about the negative because we are dealing with the dimensions of some sort of rectangular box. So we're only worried about the square root of 32 thirds. And as we saw already, y is equal to x, which is equal to z, which is equal to the root of 32 thirds. And this was much, much easier right, than trying to utilize that, um, that uh, critical value method. All right, so hopefully this gives you a good understanding of the power of Lagrange multipliers. They are not always the best way, but it's an alternative, especially if the derivatives produce some really nasty algebra. Um, it does require a little bit higher level thinking, so you might have to do some algebra tricks that you wouldn't normally do. Um, however, um, if you are pretty good with your algebra, and if you've made it this far in math, you probably should be, then this could be a much more efficient method than critical value.